Hello and thanks so much for joining us on the news. My name is Bukola Agbakisu. On the news, more political forces team up in Ogun State for President Buhari's re-election bid. INEC completes reconfiguration of smart card readers for Saturday's rescheduled polls. Democratic Republic of Congo confirms end to Ebola outbreak. Every election is determined by the people who show up. Now the news in full. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has said that the deployment of voting materials to the 774 local government areas of the country will be completed on Thursday. INEC also said that it has completed 100% the configuration of the smart card readers which will be used for the accreditation of voters on the 23rd February and 9th of March 2019, updating the media and observers on the preparedness of the commission Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, chairman of the commission, said deployment commenced on Wednesday in 10 states. This is said will be completed on Thursday. He also acknowledged that there are reports of missing materials in some states. The commission, he assured, has made good progress in the area of logistics and is good to go. He also said that only accredited diplomats will be allowed to move about as there is restriction of movement. The private home of Senator Ibikunle Amosu in Abeokuta has become a maker of salt as people come in Torrance to declare their support for him and for President Muhammad Buhari as the nation counts down to Saturday's presidential and national assembly elections. Governor's Office correspondent Bume Adegun reports that the supporters are from all political divides and interests. His reports. It is a few days to the general elections and the atmosphere gathers more momentum as the Independent National Electoral Commission INEC lifts ban on political campaigns. All political parties are using the last minutes to dot the eyes and cross the teeth. This is the street that Abos Senator Bikunayamu's in Abelkuta now turned to a place of visit as supporters. Coming groups from all parts of the state as early as 7 in the morning to register their support. And as the governor emerges to receive them, they reassure him that Saturday's election will be delivered in favor of the governor. <laughs> Senator Ibikuli Amotu has done. That is why we are trying to support with uh, Akila Day. Ode Wafu, Ogawa Senator Ibikuli Amotu. That is the only one day he for Senator. After he go to Amo Ogu State, he won't get the any Saturday. That is love. If he visit one people, I will buy Ogawa Ibikuli Amotu. I will be the host one. We buy the boat on board. I will charge you. After attending to this group, there is another turn from Odua People's Congress, UPN, SDP, and other political parties, the campaign, to work with the governor. Our support is not the same as the United States. We are not the same as the Our president, President Muhammadu Buhari, Sebobo! Governor Ibikuli Amosu in his address again tells them how they will vote on Saturday. So we go to Kampala, we bring it on Saturday, we go to 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 Saturday, we go The presidential and national assembly's election are slated for Saturday, 23rd of February, 2019, while the governorship and House of Assembly elections are slated for March 9th. Bumi Adigun, OGTV News. 
Executive members of Community Development Council in Ogun Central have met with Governor Ibikunle Amosun on a solidarity visit ahead of the Saturday elections. They all agreed to work with Governor Ibikunle Amosun and support him to be able to actualize his dreams. Governor's Office correspondent Bumi Adigun once again completes the report. Community Development Associations are usually a group of people within the same geographical confines who agree to come together to build the area they have found themselves. This is one of such groups, the Ogun Central Community Development Council. They have come on a solidarity visit to the Governor, Senator Bikulia Musun, ahead of the general election. The purpose of this uh, evening uh, meeting was to identify ourselves again with the Governor, Senator Bikulia Musun for all that he has been doing in Ogun State. When he started, we were there. As he's going along, we were following him. But up to today, we have seen that all that he promises, he has almost completed it. Commissioner for Community Development and Cooperatives in the state, Benga Ademoshu, says the state government has never taken them for granted. Well, it's just a meeting that was organized by the CDC themselves. They have come around to pay solidarity to His Excellency, to reaffirm their belief in what he's been doing, and to let him know that come next Saturday when elections will hold, the entire CDC will be in support of Senator Ebikwan Amusu for Senate in the Central, Central District. Governor Ebikwan Amusu immediately after the meeting gives approval of a fund that will assist community development councils in the state and assures them of constant support. There is nowhere in the state that you don't find our community development association. And that's why they are an integral part of development in any state, in any local government, even in any community. And they've been partners in progress. They've been complementing the government's efforts. And truly for me, I have to say this, they've been very, very supportive of all our programs. So. We are supporting them in return. There's a program with the World Bank, and we promise them that we'll do our counterpart funding. So I'm going to release the 50 million for them tomorrow. Even this year alone, I've released far in excess of maybe even almost 100 or 200 million for them. But no problems. All of these things that we are giving to them, they are in return giving back to their various communities. <laughs> With few days to the 2019 rescheduled presidential and international assembly elections, the All Progressive Congress in Nogon State continues to receive defectors from the major opposition party, the People's Democratic Party in Abekota South local government area of the state. The new set of defectors was led by a former ESCO member of PDP in Abekota South, Mrs. Iyabo Salako, as they met with the state governor, Senator Ibikunle Amosun, to pledge their loyalty and give support to his political family, APC. Matthew Shewumi has the details in this package. They were the same political family having started together in the politics of the states. But at a point in time, they all decided to follow different paths. With the return of Mrs. Yabo Salako, alongside her followers from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress, the party is now fully ready for the task ahead as the 2019 general elections draw near. Victory, they say, is true for President Buhari and Senator Amosun as they draw their strength from their togetherness and huge numbers in the coming elections. Mrs. Salako says there is no place like home, adding that it is good to be back to where she truly belongs and promises to work tirelessly to recover all the lost years by ensuring victory for the governor at the poll. APC chairman in the states, Chief Derry Adebi, Director General of Allied People's Movement Governorship Campaign, 
Chief Sharafa Atunji Ishola and Secretary to the State Government, Barista Taiwu Adeolua, congratulate them for making a right choice. Governor Amoso says the essence of any policies should be the interests of the state and thank them for putting the interests of the state first in all their political engagements. Nobody, I repeat, nobody, even those that every day they are most whatever critic, everybody agree that we have worked. People will say that, look at this World Bank program now. They are going to have a nail of the three senatorial districts. The governor uses the occasion to explain further on the community development grant being facilitated to the states. So they are giving us four million dollars. But there are certain things that we must do. We've been at this thing for about, I think, about uh, at least 18 months or so. We have an office for it. In fact, they are the ones that even help us to staff that office. They came to train them so that they will not just give their money and do anything with it. Matthew, show me. OGTV News. Still on politics, the people of Itoko World have assured of 100% vote cast for President Muhammad Buhari and Senator Ibikunle Amusu come Saturday, February 23rd, 2019. This formed the reactions while receiving the governor who came to intimate them of his resolve to cast his vote at his maternal ward in Itoko, Abeokuta. Matthew Shumi completes the report. Having voted in his paternal grandfather's ward of Uyuyu, Itai Yalodi, his paternal grandmother's ward, and Ajura, his maternal grandfather's place, Senator Ibikunle Yamusun is now set to cast his vote in his maternal grandmother's ward 6 in Itoku, as he seeks their vote to represent them at the Red Chamber while asking for their support towards the re-election of President Buhari. The people received him with joy and appreciation for his giant strides in the states. They assure him that they are solidly behind him as he offers to serve the state more. Governor Amoso said Itoko is now the number one world in the states and the people must live up to expectation with their overwhelming votes. He urges them to peacefully make their minds known through their votes as he promises to continue to work for them. The governor charged the youth to be more active in electing their leaders. Matthew Shoni, Fuji TV News. 
Still on the news, OGTV profiles history of presidential election in Nigeria. Join us after the break. It's up to us, all of us. The safety of our communities is in our hands. The police need our help and support. Boko Haram threatens our lives, our future, our country. But Nigeria belongs to us. God has blessed us with this rich land. Let us protect her as we protect each other. Report any criminal activity. Call these numbers. Your call is anonymous and it is vitally important. Your support so far has been critical. Continuing it will make all the difference between a Nigeria of the fearful and a Nigeria of the free. Protect each other, for we are not terrorists. We are Nigerians. A message from the State Security Service. Yeah, welcome back. The first democratic president of Nigeria was elected in 1979 and over the last 40 years, Nigeria has conducted eight presidential elections. As Nigeria prepares for a ninth presidential election rescheduled for Saturday, February 23, 2019, Tunde Olaniro takes you on a memory trip back to all the presidential elections ever conducted in Nigeria since 1979 to date and the uniqueness of those polls, this report. Nigeria is the most populous black nation in the world. She held her first presidential election in 1979. The presidential candidate of the National Party of Nigeria, NPN, Alaji Sheo Shagari, became the first democratic president of Nigeria in 1979 after defeating the presidential candidate of the Unity Party of Nigeria, UPN, Obafemi Awolowo. Do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will be faithful, that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance and bear true allegiance to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. To the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We don't want one north-south confrontation anymore. We want all Nigerians, wherever they are, to regard themselves as brothers and sisters. Shagari got 5,668,857 votes, while his opponent, Awolowo, got 4,916,661 votes. Again, Shagari defeated Awolowo when he got 12,081,471 votes in the 1983 poll. The UPN candidate, Chief Awolowo, got 7,907,209 votes that year. In the same year, the Shagari government was overturned by a military coup led by Major General Muhammad Buhari. MPO, 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 action! Abiola, 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 progress! Now he will be the hope for better tomorrow! June 12, 1993 presidential election is a memorable one in the history of Nigeria. The Social Democratic Party SDP presidential candidate Moshud Kashimau Abiola MKO defeated the candidate of National Republican Convention NRC Bashir Tofa. Sadly, the election was annulled by military ruler Ibrahim Babangida. The International Observer Group says so. MEC itself says so. They know it and they said it in his affidavit to the Court of Appeal in Kaduna. Next said the results were already unknown. I won. Yeah. 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 
Olusha Gombasanjo came out of prison after Abacha's death in 1998 to become Nigeria's next president after defeating Olu Falai in the 1999 poll. Obasanjo ran on the platform of the People's Democratic Party and got 18,738,154 votes. To defeat Falai, who ran on the joint platform of the Alliance for Democracy, AD, and the All People's Party, APP, Falai got 7,907,209 votes in the 1999 polls. I believe that this is what God Almighty has ordained for me and for my beloved country, Nigeria, and its people. I, ac I accept this destiny in all humility and with the full belief that with the backing and support of our people, we shall not fail. Olusha Gombasanjo returned to power for the second term in 2003 after defeating the presidential candidate of the All Nigerian People's Party, ANPP, Muhammadu Buhari. Obasanjo got 24 million. 456,140 votes, while Buhari got 12,710,022 votes. Obasanjo handed over the presidential seat to another PDP candidate, Umaru Musa Yaradua, who got 24,638,063 votes. To defeat ANPP candidate Muhammad Buhari, Buhari got 6,605,000 299 votes in the 2007 polls. The crisis in the Niger Delta commands our urgent attention. And it is a matter of strategic importance to our country. Buari tried his luck for the third time, this time running on the platform of the Congress for Progressive Change, CPC. However, he lost to PDP's presidential candidate, Good Luck Jonathan. Jonathan got 22 million. 495,187 votes, while Buhari got 12,214,853 votes. Buhari's luck changed for the better in 2015 when Good Luck Jonathan was voted out of power. Jonathan lost to Buhari after getting 12,853,162 votes, while his opponent Buhari had 15 million. 421,921 votes. I intend to keep my oath and serve as president to all Nigerians. I belong to everybody and I belong to nobody. The die is cast for another round of presidential election on Saturday, 23rd of February 2019. Who will win? The vote of Nigerians will tell. Tony Alainero. OGTV News. Ahead of February 23rd, 2019, rescheduled presidential and national assembly elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission in Ogun State has commenced distribution of sensitive voting materials to the 20 local government areas of the state. The state INEC resident electoral commissioner, Professor Abdugani Raja, says all efforts are geared towards ensuring the elections of Saturday record huge success. Mid midnight we will complete the distribution. So that the voting materials have been adequately prepared to ensure all eligible voters exercise their civic responsibility. twice. So we are almost finishing those ones. We will add them to the ones that were brought back and we will start moving them local government by local government. So within the next one hour or two, the materials will start moving out. The presidential and national assembly elections hold on Saturday, 23rd of February, 2019, across the nation. Following the postponement of the last Saturday presidential and national assembly elections, over 6,000 card readers needed for 2019 general election in Oyo State have been reconfigured. 
the resident electoral commissioner of your state, Barista Mutu Agboke, disclosed ways in Ibadan during a stakeholders' meeting with party representatives and security agents in the state. Barista Agboke emphasized that all ballot buses, result sheets, and election materials earlier distributed to some local government areas have been completely mopped up and returned to the central bank custody with the presence and acknowledgement of the representatives of the political parties in the state. He added that some more than 6,390 smart card readers earlier withdrawn by the commission to the INEC office have been reconfigured in readiness for the rescheduled election. He reminded the politicians to shun violence, added that the commission will not hesitate to declare the election inconclusive if the process is marred with violence and irregularities. The use of the smart card leader is discontinued midway into the election due to sustained malfunction and no replacement is available before 2 p.m. Please underline that before 2 p.m. A date for supplementary election shall be announced by the Commission. Foreign Affairs Minister Geoffrey Oyema has met heads of diplomatic mission and international organizations accredited to Nigeria for an interaction on the rescheduled presidential and national assembly elections. The minister assured the world that the Buhari administration remains committed to elections that will meet international standards. Nigeria's elections are significant not only for Nigerians but for the world at large, primarily because of the place the country occupies in the international community. This is why, ahead of the rescheduled presidential and national assembly elections this Saturday, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Oyema, conveyed an inter interactive session with heads of diplomatic missions and international organizations accredited to Nigeria to give them an update on the elections. He is joined by the Acting Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, and INEC Chairman, who was represented by the National Commissioner, Dr. Mustafa Liki. The Minister expressed government disappointment over the rescheduled elections, but assured the international community that the Buhari administration remains committed to elections that will produce free, fair, and credible outcome. And all Nigerians absolutely demand that on Saturday elections should be held. Uh, we cannot accept and we will not accept any excuses or any other reason. They have to be held on Saturday and uh, nothing less will be acceptable uh, to government and I, indeed I'm sure uh, to, to Nigerians. For INEC and the police, the interaction provided another opportunity to respond to some concerns raised by the diplomats and the media on the state of readiness for Saturday's rescheduled elections. If all the materials, they have been checked, audited, people have been informed, deployed by Friday to the Iraq, an election will definitely happen on Saturday morning. We are going to be professional, we are going to be impartial, and we create a enabling environment for all the political parties. Permanent Secretary of the Foreign Affairs Ministry, Ambassador Mustafa Suleiman, assured the diplomats that the ministry is available to provide any window required for engagement on the elections. The heads of commissions accredited to Nigeria might be leaving the Ministry of Foreign Affairs better informed on the preparations for their rescheduled elections come Saturday. However, they have indicated through their interactions that they will continue to monitor the process even after the votes are counted. We we'll take a commercial break now. When we return, the news continues.
If we vote for him, we will be senator. We will vote for him. We will vote for him. He be coolly a boss with you, la madi bo wa fun. He has promised. Oh yes. He has kept his. Any more central, la madi bo will be senator. Ni o gbe ka se be ni yo mo lu abi ki gomina wa senator ibi kun le amusu o tu di gomina o se le ri wipe o yo so ipile ogun o di ayo gbogbo ipile to ko ni nigeria e wo le ke wenu oko e ti wa ri wipe o wipe o si se be akoko ti wa to lati ti leyin pelu gbogbo ibo wa ni ogun central senatorial district lo si ile igbi ma sofia agba senate ni 2019 labi asiya all progressive congress apc lati abi okuta south lo si abi okuta north odeda ifo atewe koro edide ka jo dibo fun ibi kun le amusu gege bi senator ki se rere ile tesi waju ni ogun central senatorial district Bofuare mo Madu Buari APC Next Level. Glad to have you back. The news continues. Augusta government has promised to pay compensation to owners of the demolished structures along Adaton to Camp and Masheke to Adik Roads under construction. Governor Ibikunle Amosun stated this while speaking with journalists on inspection of projects within Abekuta and its environs. Government's office correspondent, Bumi Adegun, now reports. It's Masheke Adik undergoing reconstruction by the current administration in Ogun State led by Senator Ibikunle Amosun. The road, if completed, will ease the traffic on Pansheke Adigbe axis of the state capital, which has been in a deplorable condition for some time. The adapter to camp on Abelkuta Ibadan Road is also being addressed as the reconstruction of the road has begun. The state government has also promised to pay compensation to owners of demolished structures along these roads. Because the law says that one, you must have title to the land. Number two, you must have approval for those buildings that you put on, erected on those roads. Indeed, clearly with a sense of responsibility, about 90-something percent, they do not even meet all of those criteria. But, of course, we shove that aside and we've been paying. The compensation that we need to pay is about 14 billion. And clearly, I don't have 14 billion because it was before nine, later 11, Look at the roads we are doing now, again by the time you put pen on paper, which they did even before starting the demolition. The one on, uh, on Adigbe Road, on Koko Road, the one we are doing here now, we are doing some in Ilogbo as we speak. Ilogbo, that is uh, uh, Ilogbo, Iju Road, we are working there as we speak. There are some other roads that we are working on. And of course, that necessitates that we must demolish. So clearly, what we have done, we have paid about now with what we are doing again, we will have paid about nine point maybe five billion. We are releasing additional one billion any moment from now. So it will take it to about ten point five. When it was eleven, it will not be five hundred million to go. But as we are pushing ahead, we are still demolishing. We are still doing our job. So. I want to assure them that we will pay demolition before we leave. Governor Ipikuli Amosun was also at the Itoku market where he inspected the modern Adire market stores under construction. Oh yes, not even just that. In uh, Elega, there will be a market. In Adaton, there is a market. But you cannot go and say you are doing the market when the road is not fixed. By the time we look in the whole of uh, this place, if you see the trauma, the inconvenience for people living in that axis. So it will be uh, inappropriate of any government. Yes, I am in, I'm the one running the affairs of Ogun State now to leave those people the way they are. Bumi Adigun, OGTV News. Governor Ibikunle Amosun has debunked the rumors making round that he ordered the disruption of the federal government's social safety network called Trader Money at Lafengwa Market in Abeokuta. Governor Amosun says the program, being handled by the Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibaju, is a well structured program that has helped market women across the country. But the one brought to Lafengwa was a disguise by some fraudulent group of people who were seeking for the PVCs before they could be given. Please don't sell your PVC. Yesterday you've read in the papers, they said the uh, government, I'm also disrupt trader money. Trader money is not done just writing paper on pen. 
some hoodlums just went there. Hoodlums, let me use that English. They call us from the market that some people came out to say they should bring their PVC, bring their name, bring their number. Of course, I know uh, VP handles trader money. That's not the way it is done. It is a structured program. Not two days to the election. Some people carry just one paper. Give them a setup. Write your name. Bring your PVC. Write your name. How can I sit down as a governor and allow that to happen? It was even the woman. It's like a, a mother to me. They called to say that. Some people came home. They said they should bring their PVC. In fact, they ran into the room to call. And I said, okay, don't worry. Come and see me. What is it? When they came, they told us what was happening. That some people phoned them to come to say they should bring their PVC. And they should be writing their name and number. So how? That is not trader money. It's, in fact, that would be a disservice to the lofty ideals of why trader money was put together. So that wasn't trader money. Oh, it wasn't. It was just a way to coin, coin and coin our people to, to part away with their PVC. And of course, I just told them, ignore them. That was all. The International Mother Language Day is celebrated on the 21st February of every year. As customary on this day, schools, both public and private, are expected to mark the day by dressing in simple traditional attire and engage in cultural talks. This is according to a statement signed by the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Education, Science and Technology, Abekuta Alaji Shefu Rashid. This event is meant to ensure that our cultural heritage do not go into extinction. The declaration of World Day of Social Justice by the United Nations is to highlight the importance of removing barriers people face because of gender, age, race, ethnicity, religious, culture, or disability. As the world celebrates the day, Ido Fabadjo takes a look at the significance of on human existence. Social justice is an underlying principle of peaceful coexistence within and among nations. The International Labour Organization estimates that currently about 2 billion people live in fragile and conflict-affected situations, of whom more than 400 million are aged 15 to 29. As the world celebrates Social Justice Day, how has Nigeria feared in this regard? In fact, if there is no social justice, there is no society. So, we are here to get there. Why? Because our leaders, they know what is expected of them, but they are not doing it. That's one. Then number two, we the followers, we don't know what we should demand of our leaders. The issue of social justice will come in if you have a representative that believes in the welfare of the people and equitable distribution of resources across all citizens. But what we have are representatives who have been voted in only to be running after their own interests, their comfort. They say job creation and quality education are part of the potential to increase incomes and contribute to more cohesive and equitable societies in order to prevent violent conflicts and to address post-conflict challenges. We need education that would develop critical consciousness of the individual Nigerian citizen. Critical consciousness to the extent that we know our right and we are ready to defend it and we are ready to take it up. The way out is for you and I to demand that from our leaders to put that one down as a condition for anybody to be voted into power. The theme for this year's celebration is if you want peace and development, work for social justice. Ido Fabajo, OG TV News. 
The Oshile Okeonwega Oba Dr. Adida Kowadewali Tiju Shu has celebrated his 81st birthday and 30 years on the throne of his forefathers with thanksgiving to God. Elizabeth Esson reports that the event which started with a prayer session at the private residence of the monarch was climaxed with a praise concert at the Olushe Basojo Presidential Library at Bekuta, Ogo State reports. Just to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. This biblical verse was evident in the life of Obadiah Kwadewali Tejusho, the Oshile Okionoegba, as he celebrated his 81st birthday and 30 years on the throne before God. Name them one by one, and it will surprise you what God has done. That song was written for me, I'm sure, originally, because I can continue to and count and count my blessings forever and ever. Blessings, his children, marriages, everything happening at God's time. Only joy is out. So, uh, is a good uh, testimony for people. I wish him all the good things he, wish, he wishes himself. Baba hasn't seen anything yet. God is taking him to a greater height. And we shall be there. All eyes will see. Everybody will know that he served a living God. So I wish him many, many more happy years and a fulfilled life. It shall be well with him. He has contributed so much to the, to the growth of the body of Christ in the state. He's a king that knows God and loves to praise God. The celebrant was joined by dignitaries from within and around the states. He has been a staunch supporter and a pillar of the Bukuli Amos administration and we cannot take him now. Kabese has been able to fulfill more of the things anybody could wish himself in life. I we are very proud of Kabese. I wish Kabese a very happy birthday. I pray that the Lord Almighty will grant him good health and sound mind for the rest of his days. Anybody who is associated with Christ is always promised a beautiful life, even thereafter. Glory of God, I wish him many more in good health and in, and in prosperity. The celebration, which was incorporated into an album launch of Akinjiboku, tagged Praise Unlimited, afforded various gospel artists, including evangelist Ebenisa Obe, to lift the celebrants up in spirit. The venue of the ceremony was filled to the brim with praise lovers and well wishers of the celebrants. Elizabeth Esson, OGTV News. The Court of Appeal in Abuja has adjourned till February 27 for appeals filed by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onoye, in connection with his trial before the Code of Conduct Tribunal as well as the Tribunal's order for his suspension. It was the first successive adjournment the case had suffered since February 12. On February 12, the cases were adjourned due to the inability of the three-man panel of the court, led by Justice Abdul Abuki, to form a quorum. At the court resumed sitting on February 15, the respondents to the appeals, the federal government, through its lawyer, Mr. Oyinkolyosho, of the Federal Ministry of Justice, applied for an adjournment to enable the private lawyer prosecuting Onoye at the CCT, Mr. Ali Umar San, to properly take over the handling of the appeals as directed by the Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Abubakar Malami San. The tribunal had fixed March 11 for the hearing of other pending applications filed by Onoye after the suspended CJN had pleaded not guilty to the six count of false declaration of assets instituted against him. The director of Stephen Center International School of Bantoko, Abel Kuta, Reverend Isaac Oluwale Newton Wilson, has been docked before the High Court sitting at Tishabo Abel Kuta on a five count charge. The accused is standing trial on rape and other four count charge, contrary to Section 358 of the Criminal Code, Volume 1, Revised Law of August State 2016. Peter Falomo has the details.
A five-count charge, including a case of immorality, has been levied against one Reverend Newton Wusu, director, Stephen Center International School and Children's Home in Abiokuta. Concerned parents brought the case before the High Court sitting in Abiokuta to seek justice for the young ones. Presenting the case before the court, prosecuting counsel, Barrister Solomon Marin, on behalf of the Attorney General of Ogun State, said, appraising the five-count charge leading to rape according to Section 358 of the Criminal Code, Volume 1, Revised Laws of the State, 2016, is not ordinarily a billable one. Rape charge, attempt to commit rape, indecent assault on some female students in year 2007 and 2008 were all levied against the defendant. He, however, pleaded not guilty to the charges. Presenting his case, the defense counsel, Samuel Unwaji, pleaded for bail condition for his client, considering his status in the society and applied for preliminary objections. In his ruling, Justice Solomon Olubemi granted bail to the defendant in the sum of 5 million naira, with two charities who should be owners of landed property and of proven integrity. Counsels to the defendant and plaintiff speak on the judgment. We just want justice for the victims of the alleged crime against him. We just want justice for the society. So we are not out to persecute or to do anything that will frustrate him. All we want is justice. And we, you know, he was not really duly served with these processes. We are people that say, go through it. We want it expedited. We want it determined as soon as possible. But we believe there's not, and the whole process is a chariot and it's ludicrous. Some of the past students attest to the act. I want justice to be done. I just want everything to come to an end. I want him to stop because it's not as if he has stopped. He's still doing it. And with this, it will leave a, it will leave a stigma in the, in the young girls. It will, I don't know. I don't even know how to put it, but I just want justice to be done. This one should be an example that you cannot just abuse people's children because you think they are powerless or they cannot do anything to you and go scot-free. Some of them even go ahead mm -hmm. to tell you in parables, oh, this man took me out and he gave me a camu, bash, sugar, which means in house a pap without sugar. There are a lot of people there who are been haunting children, who are pedophiles, sleeping with kids, molesting, abusing them. So if people like this go scot free, what happens then to our society? What happens to posterity? Former chairman of the school PTA also bear his mind. We felt concerned, and as so at that point, my executive I uh, met, discussed this matter, the indiscipline in that school. We issued our uh, communique and uh, minutes of uh, meeting. We forwarded it to him. And when he saw our write-up, he flared up. Instead of him to call us for a discussion, he didn't do that. The next thing he said he does not want to see the PTA in the school any longer. The case was thereafter adjourned till 4th of April 2019. Peter Falomo, OGTV News. On the business segment of the news, ATM records 39.15 trillion transactions in fourth quarter of 2018. More of business news when we return.